doctor, as you possibly have found out. I'm not a doctor, but I'm a person with common sense. I'm not a doctor, but I have common sense. There are promising therapies. And that would be REMS. It's called Remdesivir. 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 I don't want to get anybody uh, overly excited, but I'm very excited by that. So you have Remdesivir, and you have uh, chloroquine, and some people would add to it hydroxy hydroxychloroquine. That's a drug that the president has directed us to take a closer look at. We want to do that in the setting of a clinical trial, a large pragmatic clinical trial. And I say, try it. The first ever prescription depressant hit the shelves today. Approved by the FDA last month, Despondex is intended as a treatment for the approximately 20 million Americans who are insufferably cheery. Tests prove the drug is effective at reducing a range of symptoms from squealing loudly when a friend calls to use of the phrase cool beans and excessive hugging. Dr. Alman Way calls the drug a huge step forward in the battle against exuberance. If you're in a good mood every so often, well, that's fine. That's normal. This is for those that have a persistent positive outlook on life. Eva Henry of New Haven, Connecticut began participating in a clinical trial of Despondex six weeks ago. I was always telling people how cute their outfits were and bringing them little gifts. I'd beam at anyone who made eye contact with me. I didn't realize life didn't have to be like that. Eva said she never knew how her annoyingly chipper attitude was affecting those around her. Over and over again I'd ask Jeff to ride his bike down to the botanical garden with me no matter how many times he said no. And she was always smiling mm -hmm. but I didn't know what to do to help her. I used to think, why am I the only one trying to set up single friends with each other? And now I realize it. I, I was sick. I need a treatment. Eva says the drug may have saved their marriage. Now Jeff and I can just waste a night sitting on the couch watching a TV show neither of us enjoy. Mm like a regular couple. Not everyone is convinced that Despondex is the cure-all for perkiness, however. In this week's Time magazine, Michael Pelosic of UCLA argues that many patients get similar results from natural remedies, something as simple as a diet of corn syrup and white bread and a total lack of exercise. But Dr. Wei disagrees. We have to erase the stigma attached with getting chirpy people help, real medical help. I mean, do you know what it's like to be around these people? It's pretty annoying. Doctors estimate the new drug could reduce the number of costume or theme parties in the U.S. by up to 40 percent. Take it. I really think they should take it. In fact, I might do it anyway. I may take it. I've seen things that I sort of like, so what do I know? I'm not a doctor. The purpose of the uh, Masonic uh, Child Identification Program is to provide parents with a readily available uh, package of data that they can provide authorities in the event something happens to one of their, ch one of their children. And not to worry, there are no microchips implanted in your child. The CHIP part of the name is an acronym for Child Identification Program. When we gather the standard name, uh, address, uh, phone numbers, height, weight, uh, eye color, you know, those things, uh, special uh, identif identifying marks, uh, allergies if any, we take uh, photos, both uh, f facial photos and photos of the ears. We do a short video where the child, uh, if, they are, if they are able to speak, speaks directly onto the, to the video. So we have a voice print of the child as well. He is the vice president of the National Board of Social Council. Social Council. Social Council. Social Council. Social Council. Council. Social Council. Social Council. take fingerprints and we put all of this data on a CD and provide it to the parents. We also provide them with a swab for uh, um, getting a DNA swab and we also provide them with an uh, imprint where they can get an imprint of the child's teeth. So not only does it provide DNA as well as a swab, but it is also a source if you were using tracking dogs to, to provide a scent for the, for the child. Number eight. We will finally complete the biometric entry exit visa tracking system, which we need desperately. For years, Congress has required 
biometric entry exit visa tracking systems, but it has never been completed. The politicians are all talk, no action, never happens, never happens. Masonic Chip Ontario is funded through the money that is raised by their volunteers. And you'll often see them throughout the city at events such as the Teddy Bears Picnic, the CLE, and the Spring and Fall Shows at the Sports Dome. We, we do this free, by the way, for the public. Any parent uh, can bring a child in. There's no cost to it. So we raise the money internally. Specifically, hello to the 90% of America with health insurance. The other 33 million of you, well, hit the bricks. I'll wait. Hi, the rest of you. I'm Roger, and I believe you're entitled to the health care that you need, or perhaps the health care you can afford. That's why I founded Horton Pharmaceuticals, a company dedicated to holding drug patents. Our drug company gains patents by hiring the smartest people in the world and giving them anything they need to develop the latest, most effective, most cutting edge business deals. Deals to buy existing drug patents. You are the best, Dirk. <laughs> Dirk's an attorney. Anyway, after we spend money advertising the drugs we patented and other money getting doctors to prescribe our drug and other other money lobbying in Washington, we spend, you know, the rest of it on research. And don't get me wrong, it costs billions of dollars and years in effort to develop just one new drug. But believe me, we've got many, many more billions than that. That lobbying money brings us $30 billion every year that used to be your taxes. Mmm, <laughs> your taxes. I know this sounds complicated, so just think of it like this. Oh, hey. We also spend $24 billion and countless sales babe hours every year marketing our drugs to your doctor. And your doctor is the one who needs medical help. They're stressed out by school debt and malpractice insurance premiums, costing each of them millions. Maybe that stress is why 53% of doctors are obese, or why one in six surgeons has an alcohol problem, or why becoming a physician more than doubles the chances someone will commit suicide. Who can blame those emo nerds for taking the bait when drug companies mismarket a drug or two here or there, causing tens of billions of annual dollars in avoidable mishaps and deaths? But don't worry. Our drug company cares about keeping you alive just as much as you care. Which is basically you don't. 10% of you lie to your doctor about your smoking habit. 20% of ER patients are there to score painkillers that we make. And doctors train to figure out how you're lying to them, not if. Because when it comes to being honest with a medical professional, millions of you would literally rather die. By the way, my vertebrae hurt. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue 
it's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle, it will disappear. And from our shores, we, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows. But don't forget the doctors. If it were up to the doctors, they may say, let's keep it shut down. Let's shut down the entire world. Oh, no. The Democrat proposed bill H.R. 6666.